be the first to see Miss Saigon. It's powerful, it's emotional, and it's almost ready to roll. Miss Saigon, a love story set near the end of the Vietnam War, is in the final stages of rehearsal, and the excitement is palpable. On silent feet, it came. This song, The Morning of the Dragon, follows the fall of Saigon and signifies the North Vietnamese army takeover. The morning of the dragon trooping up the street. Okay, now at the moment, John, I think you're more frightened than he is. <laughs> exactly, and I think it's supposed to be the other way around. So, all right, can we bring you in once again? Okay. Very precise. Use a lot the lyrics and the wonderful music you are singing. Overseeing it all during a brief visit to Sydney is Claude Michel Schomburg, who composed Miss Saigon following his successful Les Miserables. And I think that there is a quality and expectation from an Australian audience about the show, who is going to make the show totally different. When we gave the show the first time in England, the audience was not so involved with the Vietnam War problem. And here in Australia, because of the Vietnam War, the involvement of Australia with the war, the big community of refugees you have, you have here in, in Australia, it will be something else. And the show will be, will be seen from a, a different angle and different vision. But men will always be men. They washed up my brain. I'm still what I am. Stars Peter Cousins and Joanne Ample joined in for a big photo call today. A couple of minutes to take their minds off the pressure of eight performances a week once Miss Saigon opens at the Capitol Theatre on July 29. 15 million dollars later, the biggest musical in the world comes down under. Very simply, it is a, an incredibly spectacular love story. Um, it's, it's sort of a popular grand opera. Crazy sound, a lonely sound. Very excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> it's my first time to open a show. And for a lot of people, I think, who, who have a, an understanding of Vietnam and, and the consequences of that war, I think a very cleansing shine for them. <laughs> It's the story of Miss Saigon, based on the Puccini opera Madame Butterfly, but updated to the setting of the Vietnam War. This is, the this is as well active as the show has ever been. Um, it's brilliantly sung, and I I'm absolutely confident that it's the best we've had since it opened at Drury Lane. Playing Kim, Joanna Ampill, who grew up in Manila and won the role in the London production of Miss Saigon when she was just 17. I had to lie about my age because they wanted 18-year-old girls for the part. Producers got around the problem when Joanna's mum agreed to act as chaperone for her first year in the show. And yeah, and so it's kind of happened like a, like a mad dream. It's like the phone call that changes your life or something playing Kim's G.I. lover, Peter Cousins. After starring in shows like Les Mis and The Phantom of the Opera, Peter wasn't sure a Vietnam vet was quite his style. I've done so much classical sort of period stuff, that this was a contemporary musical, and the, the uh, vibe around was they were looking for a, a kind of real rock contemporary sound and um, actor to boot, you know, and so... I kind of thought, oh, well, that's, that's really not my speed. What a party that was. You're going to leave me now. Yes, I'm going to leave. The producers thought and otherwise, and Peter became American infantryman Chris. And suddenly, this, this person, this girl, arrives in his life and, and makes him feel again and feel alive. And then when he loses her, and um, when the Americans pull out, um, uh, at the, during the fall of Saigon, he, he feels he's betrayed her and is racked with guilt. Very much like America felt, I think, about a lot of the Vietnamese. Behind the scenes, it's clearly a high-tech production, with 60 scenery movements controlled by computer. There are times when uh, so many people, so many pieces are moving at the same time that uh, you couldn't possibly control that with uh, human beings. 
The staging of Miss Saigon in the remodelled Capitol Theatre is also a big win for Sydney. Melbourne tried very hard to convince producers to stage the show there. There was only one possibility, which is the Capitol, because that was the first theatre to be redeveloped. With well over $20 million in advance bookings, Miss Saigon is already a hit. Humpy, humpy. Batteries included. In the mid-1980s, two Frenchmen who created the hit musical Les Miserables happened upon this photograph in a magazine and in an instant, they saw there the tragic story that would become Miss Saigon. As long as you can have your chance, I swear I'll give my life for you. So I did the connection between a story who could happen during the Vietnam War, the ultimate sacrifice of a mother for, for, for the children. Claude Michel Schomburg, the co-creator of Miss Saigon, is in Australia to supervise the final days of rehearsal. Because you know there is nobody more paranoid than the writers. So that's why we like to check what's happening with the different production all over the world. You're going to leave me now. Yes, I'm going to leave. And take you out with me. <laughs> Just weeks before the American withdrawal from Vietnam, a GI, Chris, played by Australian actor Peter Cousins, falls in love with Kim, played by Joanna Ample. In a life when nothing seems real, I have found you. I have found you. For Peter Cousins, Miss Saigon works on many different levels. I think a lot of people just kind of see it as a good story. I think the other people will find it very cleansing, especially those who are probably close to the Vietnam War. And, of course, other people will just be, hopefully, moved by the, um, the nature of the storytelling. You know, they could be carried away by the romance of it. There is still something more. She has a child. You have a son. Milton Craig Neely, fresh from the London production, was impressed at the way the Australian cast was prepared for this emotionally demanding show. We saw footage from uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, we saw we documentaries, uh, we did uh, improvisational exercises to get us into the mood of if you were a Vietnamese soldier, if you were an American soldier, if you were wounded, if you were stepped on a landmine, we did all sorts of things like that. As far as the company coming together, we've got kids from the Philippines, we've got kids from Australia here, kids from all over. And we've got a good group of people. And, and, and we've got young ones, older ones. And, uh, but good group, good hearts. And that's really important because we have to live together for the next year. This show in particular is actor driven more than anything. Although there's a lot of extraordinary sets and costumes and whatever, um, it really is dependent on what the actors are doing. And if we're not up to scratch, the show kind of... Um, you know, isn't as powerful and as strong as it could be. Also, I think it's the type of energy which Australians bring to this show, which is a certain irreverence, a certain informality, a certain raw edge. We tell the story in our own way, which is, I've seen the show in London and in Los Angeles, and again, it is, it's, it is different. I think we have the edge on all of them, of course. <laughs> So, if you're looking for a show that's a powerful, uplifting, emotional journey, then get yourself to Sydney's new Capital Theatre for...
Saigon. Book at first call or the Capitol Theatre. 